and welcome to my channel. My name is Dwayne Kimball and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'll bring you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. In today's topic, I'm going to be discussing military sexual trauma. How does the VA define it? What are some examples of military sexual trauma? And what can veterans do if they didn't report it? What markers to look for? Okay, so this is my first time discussing military sexual trauma on my channel, and I have four slides that I'm going to go through you that go through with you that I obtained from the VA's M21 manual reference. Okay, uh, this is a very sensitive topic, and I've seen some veterans actually get denied for military sexual trauma uh, for many reasons. Okay, uh, but if you are a veteran and you feel that you have a legitimate claim for military sexual trauma, then you definitely want to pay close attention, okay? So without any further ado, we're going ahead and jump right into today's video, okay? So, slide number one. Here in slide number one, um, this is the M21 reference, and as in many of my other videos, you'll, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see that I'll share uh, the M21. But again, one thing I like about the M21, it's easier to search, and if you look down at the bottom of this slide, you'll see 38 CFR 3.304 subpart F uh, part 5, okay? So it's an easy way to get to the 38 CFR depending on what uh, information that you're looking for in the M21. All right, so this M21, you see the number and the name is General Information on Personal Trauma, okay? So uh, personal trauma, VA defines it for the purpose of the Department of Veterans Affairs, Disability compensation claims based on PTSD refers broadly to stressor events involving harm perpetrated by a person who is not considered part of an enemy force. Some examples, assault, battery, robbery, mugging, stalking, harassment. Those are just a few examples, okay? Then it goes on to define military sexual trauma is a subset of personal trauma and refers to sexual harassment, sexual assault, or rape that occurs in a military setting, okay? Straightforward. Now, at the bottom, you see I highlighted the 38 CFR in red. Uh, and this is a large 38 CFR, so I'm not going to share it in any of these slides. But if you go down uh, to subpart 5, I'm sorry, subpart 4, number 5, it explains personal slash military sexual trauma claims for PTSD, okay? Now, that, uh, the rest of the 38 CFR, it covers other areas of PTSD, but that section, uh, subpart F, number five, covers military sexual trauma, okay? So, the next slide, slide number two. Slide number two, uh, this references basically... Uh, telling VA employees developing claims of service connection based on in-service personal trauma, okay? So this happened in service, and it states, uh, because a personal trauma is, is an extremely personal and sensitive issue, many incidents of personal trauma are not officially reported, and the victims of these type of in-service trauma may find it difficult to produce evidence to support the occurrence of the stress, okay? So we all know if you're claiming something due to service, it has to be some type of documentation. But with their, the, what the VA is saying, a lot of veterans do not report it. Now, if you do report it, then there's a paper trail, okay? Uh, whether the individual that committed this act uh, upon another uh, military soldier, they could have gotten an Article 15. Uh, they could have been reprimanded. They could have been kicked out of the military, whatever. And there should be some type of uh, paper trail. Now, I've seen uh, where some drill instructors had committed uh, some type of uh, personal uh, assault or sexual assault against some recruits. And they got an Article 15, and the local newspaper uh, picked it up. Okay? And, it's in, you know, they'll have an article on that. So that is when it's reported and there's a paper trail, but most times veterans do not report it, okay? So if they don't report it, 
That's what we're going to talk about in the next two slides. All right. So slide number three. Here's slide number three. Uh, this is a Linfly M21 reference. I don't think I copied all of it. A lot of times uh, I don't copy the entire M21. So I do always encourage vets to go out there. You have the number of the uh, M21 and the name. Go out there and just double check, do additional research. Because when I was doing research on this, there is a lot of information out there on this. Okay. So uh, this M21, evidence that may constitute a marker of a personal trauma. Now, a marker. All right. Before I start reading some uh, things I have highlighted in red, a marker is something rating specialists look for when there's no confirmed in service stressor, meaning that they can't confirm that an assault or a robbery or something took place. So the next thing that raiders can use are markers. OK, a lot of veterans don't know what markers are as it pertains to uh personal trauma, or uh, uh, military sexual trauma, okay? So the first paragraph, in service rec if service records contain no explicit documentation that personal trauma occurred and alternate sources of evidence do not provide credible supporting evidence of the trauma, evidence of behavioral changes around the time of and after the incident may constitute a marker of a personal trauma, PTSD stress, okay? So they're telling you uh, what, uh, what may constitute a marker of a personal trauma, okay? Then it says the term marker means an indicator of the effect for consequences of the personal trauma on the veteran. A marker could be one or more behavior events or a pattern of changed behavior, all right? Now, um, you see some items in the bullet comments. I highlighted some in red that I've actually seen before, okay? So it goes on to say, evidence that may be a marker of trauma includes, but is not limited to, sudden requests that the veteran's military occupational series or duty assignment be changed without other justification. Changes in performance and performance evaluations. Increase disregard for military or civilian authority, unexplained economic or social behavior changes, treatment for uh, physical injuries around time of the claimed trauma, but not reported as a result of the trauma. And down below it says, uh, notes behavioral change, evidence may include lay statements or, or documentary evidence, okay? Uh, now, again, these are just some examples uh, that they're giving. It could be others, uh, but these are just uh, a, a few here that I, that I think of anyway, all right? But think about the marker. What is it, and especially if the veteran did not report it, okay? So the next slide, slide number four. And here in slide number four, you can see uh, this states alternate, uh, uh, alternate, I'm sorry, al alternate, sources of evidence of in-service personal trauma, okay? Uh, so it says uh, examples of uh, such alternate sources of evidence include but are not limited to, okay? And I highlighted some in red that I think that uh, when most veterans uh, don't report it, uh, some of the things that they can have, okay? Um, family members or roommates, Remember on the, one of the previous slides, talked about lay statements. Your roommate or family member can write a lay statement as it pertains to your behavioral change. So if they know that if you say that this incident happened on, let's just say, November 1st, 2020, okay, and you come home on leave around Christmas and you share this with a family member or a friend, okay, then they can write a lay statement and say, hey, you know, I uh, spoke with, uh, Jane Doe or John Doe on Christmas of this year, you know, then they can get into the facts, okay? Uh, fellow service members and personal diaries or journals. But there are some other um, examples uh, as well, okay? Now, look in the notes section, and what do we have here? We got that same 38 CFR, 
38 CFR 3.304, subpart 4, number 5. Okay, and it states, provides that in PTSD claims based on in-service personal assault, evidence, evidence from sources other than the veteran's service record may be used to corroborate the veteran's account of the stressor event. Okay, um, it's, 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 this is, I would say when they're using these, there's a very low threshold when it comes to PTSD claims. OK, um, VA employees is not supposed to uh, make it a high threshold for the veteran to uh, prove uh, this. OK, but there is some things that are needed to service connect when veterans claiming PTSD due to military sexual trauma. OK, I know that may sound like a lot of information, but there's still a lot of M21 references, other 38 CFRs as it pertains to this. But I just want to give the veterans out there a small snapshot of some things uh, that they can do uh, when it's reported, but more so when it is not reported, okay? Uh, when I was in the military, I may have heard about, you know, a few claims, a few uh, instances uh, where this took place, but I didn't hear about it a lot, not until I went to work uh, at the Department of Veterans Affairs. And to my surprise, when I worked, I worked a few military sexual trauma claims. There's actually a large number of veterans. I'm sorry, male veterans that are filing for military sexual trauma and getting service connected, okay? So it's just not women, but it's uh, some men as well. I attended this, um, I think it was the uh, uh, last Saturday in August, a local uh, nonprofit uh, organization, Veterans Counseling Veterans, they had a military sexual trauma uh, conference, and I was one of the panelists to talk about what I just talked about in this video. Um, you know, some things that veterans can do as it pertains to military sexual trauma when they didn't report it. So that nonprofit here in the Tampa, Florida area, area Veterans Counseling Veterans, is doing a really good job of bringing awareness uh, about this and. Uh, individual that put it on is a retired major, Tony Ellsworth. And I asked him, I said, you know what? Man, this is a, you know, just hearing some of these survivor stories. And I was like, I started thinking, but some of these perpetrators could still be in the military. If it wasn't reported or if it was reported, maybe the command just tried to sweep it on the rug because that commander or high ranking NCO or whatever, they liked them or they were buddies. And I'm just like, man, you know, what is the military, um, doing about this. I think you hear a little bit more about it now than you did before. But one of the things that I did want to elaborate on, if you are a military sexual trauma victim and you're filing a claim and you didn't report it, think about some of the markers that I explained in one of the videos. Okay. Again, the threshold is not real high. Okay. The VA employee has to go through a uh, certain development as it pertains to these claims. You may get a call, okay? But also in M21, I didn't show this, but during the research, I found this. They are not supposed to get so entangled to make that veteran relive that story, okay? But they do have to do certain development, all right? So when the vet claims it, um, you know, hopefully if it wasn't reported, then the veteran has, you know, maybe a lay statement or something that they can use as a marker, okay? That's key. And in one of those bullet comments, it stated that the veteran sought medical treatment but didn't relate that to the trauma. So I'm going to give you a quick example. Just say someone was sexually assaulted, and then a week or so later, a few days, a week later, they went on um, sick call, and they would start reporting maybe some lower abdominal pain or, or something like that. They can use that, meaning they, the VA, can use that as a marker. But you as a veteran, you want to be educated so you'll know to help point that out, point them in the right direction. Let them know, hey, I'm claiming um, PTSD due to military sexual trauma. I didn't report it. But in my medical records, I went on sick call because of X, Y, and Z. Please concede this as a marker. Or if you didn't, 
Another example that they used um, in one of the slides, reporting it to a roommate and or family member, or if you got any bad counseling statements or something like that, okay? Uh, those are just examples. So I hope you found this video very informative and educational. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you. Thank you.